Smile's a story about a clinical psychiatrist who, following a bizarre encounter with a patient, begins experiencing these terrifying occurrences that she can't explain and starts to believe that something evil may have come into her life. When I was making this short, I was really intrigued by the, uh, the sense of, you know, when you wake up from a bad dream, um, that feeling of panicky doom that kind of lingers with you. I mean, for several minutes afterwards, even though you've realized it was just a dream, uh, that sense of, of panic kind of lingers with you, and I wanted to try to capture that feeling on screen. And at the same time, I also really wanted to investigate sort of the pairing of something that might be supernatural that might present as something psychological. A horror film is most successful when it works first as a dramatic story, and then when you bring in all of the horror elements, it really elevates it into something else. Film allows you to do really interesting things with the medium and sort of uh, play on the audience in unexpected and unconventional ways. And specifically for Smile, the further along the film goes, I wanted it to descend into this kind of nightmare logic that really we can't ex like expect where it's going. I was really interested in tapping into the fear of the unknown and unknown evil. And for me, uh, I wanted to explore the frightening things that we carry around with us and what it might feel like to have your mind turned against you. I think that not being believed is a universal fear that we can all relate to. And so the horror in the movie comes from experiencing something frightening, not understanding where it's coming from, and not being believed about it. And I wanted to take all of that stuff and create a film that feels like an escalating nightmare. Sosie Bacon plays Dr. Rose Cotter, a psychiatrist who works at a public hospital. And her entire life and career have been shaped by certain events from her childhood, and I wanted to take those events and sort of hang them over the film like a dark cloud. And she's somebody who's made it her life's mission to make sure that anyone who needs help can get it. But in her own personal life, she remains incredibly guarded as a way to sort of protect her own vulnerabilities. And when things start spiraling out of control for Rose, she finds that the tables have turned for her and suddenly she's the one experiencing these impossible things and no one around her is believing anything she's saying. And she's going to have to face the things that she fears most if she wants to survive. So she came to the film incredibly prepared. Uh, she had created this document that she called core knowledge about the character and leading up to production we were talking constantly trading ideas back and forth and really working on the character together um, the degree of difficulty of what she had to take on was enormous she's not only in almost every scene but she's operating at these extremely high levels of anxiety and stress and panic and you know, that can really take a toll on an actor, but she's incredibly committed to her craft and really knocked it out of the park. And I personally believe that she's given one of the most astounding debut lead performances in recent history. I think you're trying to, first and foremost, uh, tell a great character story. I think that's the most important thing because if we can't invest in the character, then we're not gonna be frightened by their plight. So. For me, it all really starts there, and once I think that there is a dramatic story that's really working, you start to layer in these moments that have the ability to really strike at the core of the audience and what they might be afraid of. And it's about anticipating what's gonna potentially scare an audience and then finding ways to pull the rug out from underneath them and subvert their expectations. The smiles in our film, the ones you gotta watch out for are the unnervingly wide, toothy smiles, but the real key is it's all in the eyes. These dead eyes that are almost like a predator, something that's really threatening you. I chose to use the smile to represent the evil in the film because of the strength of the inherent contradiction. Uh, a smile is meant to be a warm, friendly gesture that is welcoming and inviting. And, you know, it's something that is primal within us. We learn to smile as babies before we even learn to speak. And I wanted to see if I could take that and flip it on its head and turn a smile 
into a threat, you know, something that feels dangerous and evil and see if uh, I could use that to really creep audiences out. I think the film is going to surprise audiences while also respecting their intelligence. Um, it's deeply psychological, but it's also shockingly visceral and physical. It's got big frightening moments that are gonna hopefully cause audiences to jump out of their seat and scream, but it also leans into this creeping sense of unease that will slowly burrow its way underneath an audience's skin and hopefully linger with them long after the credits roll. It's gonna scare you, it's gonna shock you, it's gonna make you wanna cover your eyes. It's a mysterious, nightmarish roller coaster of an experience that I think you're gonna wanna talk about with your friends as soon as it's over. And nothing can prepare you for what's gonna happen.